guess it seems that there's a lot of concerns about education, the direction it's going in at the minute, not least the education bill. Um, but the, all the questions I'm tabling for next week have been raised to me by concerned teaching professionals and parents. A lot's to do with food. Indeed. Tell us more. Well, one of them follows up um, the story, the, the menu at the National Sports Centre Cafe, which does not seem to me to reflect the healthy lifestyle that we think would be um, flagship cafe premises of such an institution. I mean, the work that goes on, the availability and accessibility of sport through the National Sports Centre is fantastic across the island. But the cafe doesn't seem to reflect those values and it's more delving into the department policy on providing cafe, should that be more in keeping with sort of healthy lifestyle that we expect from the National Sports Centre. It's more than that, you're also critical of the standard of food in schools. Yes, this was another one that was um, sent to me and I've referred it to the Director of Public Health as well. Um, my child children have school meals in the state school sector and I'm sure lots of times they're very happy with that and there's a there is a salad bar but quite often we're talking smiley faces or wedges um, and there seems to be uh, quite a heavy amount of processed food so I think in some in some uh, impression you could get from this is that the school meal service is actually one mass catering ready meal and is that really what we want for our schools and now the department has it was all centralized under the Department of Health and Social Care and now it's been um, transferred back to education and they've, as far as I know, have been running it for a year. Um, How much is cooked in the schools? That's the issue. I think it's just heated up, so it, whether it's chilled or coming in frozen, um, how do we know what the correct amounts of salt and sugar content, the balance between carbs, um, starchy foods, protein, it doesn't seem to be reflected the healthy food standards that we expect are being observed in the schools. I don't think the school meal staff are being able and given the freedom to provide the meals that perhaps they would rather provide for the children and I don't see that having the selection that we've got it's either um, uh, on here jacket potato chicken chugs chicken burger vegetable nuggets ham and cheese pizza oven baked wedges or salad bar available but my experience and what I hear reported um, from the various schools is you know sometimes teachers or school meal staff are sneaking in an extra bit of fruit and feeling guilty about that but even five-year-olds know that a smiley face is actually the smiley face of a chip and it's fried food my my concern is we have in many cases not all now because some schools were not fitted with the um, necessary kitchen equipment um, but the budget for school meals is over £700,000 but a written question I posed just a couple of weeks ago has got even more concern for me £738,000 is the total catering budget it seems that £553,000 is the cost of school catering staff and provisions they're spending £85,000 on equipment replacement but the management team cost is £100,000 well that just seems ridiculous to me. Why are we not devolving it back to the primary schools who are capable of cooking their own meals, letting them procure it locally from local suppliers, fresh food, fresh vegetables, local meat and fish supplies, and cook meals as they used to do just a few years ago? Are you slightly worried that you're going to get tarred with the brush of it's only education that matters to Daphne Kane? Not at all. No, there's, I've got a huge range of concerns. And I mean, we've got many, many significant motions coming before us next week, not least um, environmental policy, um, emissions. We've got um, the steam packet, the sea services agreement. There's very, very big issues at the minute, but I see a lot of work going on in many, many departments at all levels. Um, and there's a lot of people doing a lot of good work. I suppose the, the amount of concerns which I'm getting from across the island, not just from my own constituency, I'm getting a lot of people raise concerns, particularly over the education bill and the, that in a moment. and the direction of travel of the department. And I can't help but respond to it because there are, there are concerns, there are serious concerns there. The education bill, and you've asked uh, a, a written uh, question here, uh, basically about who was involved in drafting it and how much it's cost. 
well, how much has it cost to get to this point? And significantly, who has been involved and had input into the measures in this bill outside of the department? Because my information is that actually nobody, no, no teaching professionals on the island, all they're getting is the same length of public consultation that the public is getting. And I, I think in terms of, we need, a there's a bigger question than all the... Um, concerns over the education bill and there are many over the ambiguity of the phrasing um, the policies it contains the policy shift um, mostly where do we want and what do we want the department of education to be for the future well, one criticism i've heard is that the department's making the policy but it's also going to administer that it. is precisely the point so if we think in in the adjacent and it's Thailand, not checked on no it's it is judge and jury but also they are putting this future world, the world according to them. What what policy and ha what what um, situation would we like to operate in? Oh, we'll grab all the power to the centre, we'll take the autonomy off the teachers, we'll make them answerable to the department, and already I'm sensing a disinclination, a reluctance of teaching professionals to go public because it's in opposition to the department. Well, and we've, we've tried uh, and approached the teaching unions and we've heard nothing back, really. Which is unusual because normally because you'd have thought the unions would be kicking and screaming. Well, I believe they are responding to the consultation because that is the process. My worry is that really the teaching professionals are the ones that you want to have input into this at an early stage, so that the the policies and the the whole governance of the Department of Education and the policies that the direction of travel for the future is determined in consultation in cooperation with the teaching professionals, not imposed on them by a centre that seems ever more separate from what's happening at the grassroots level.